Hey guys, G Dog here, and we are back with some more truth. And yeah, we're just in my hub world. And yeah, I think this episode we're gonna hit some dungeons and stuff. So yeah, let's uh, let's go and make our way into an adventure world. Now, like I say, I'm level 15, so I'm gonna be a little over leveled for this. But as I'm recording, it, you know, it takes a little bit of focus to do my combat and stuff. So I'm gonna make it easy on myself, I think. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like when we start a new character, it'll be tough. Tough from the get-go. Right then, so we are in the Uber Adventure 1 portal. Now, a lot of the um, adventure maps do start off in the Enchanted Forest, I've noticed. But if you look at the map, you can see we've got purpley bits, which is Enchanted Forest. The grey bits are like Arctic icy realms. The green bits are like forest. Uh, the sandy bit just below us is like desert. To the very left of the map, you can see like a dark bit. Now that's uh, lava fields. And on the very right hand side of the map, you can see a different shade grey. Now that is um, like a robotic sort of biome. So you get lots of robots and stuff. And I believe next to the grey, there's a different shade green. I believe that's like for fairy woods and stuff. So yeah. Right, now also on the map, uh, you will notice there's actually only one here, but you see that uh, red X, basically that means that's a dungeon that's been completed. Now they do reset after a time, I'm not sure how long it is, it must be quite frequent because, like I say, there's only, only one X in here, so we've only actually done one dungeon in here. So, we are going to hit some of the other dungeons. Now... I didn't mention this in the last episode, but this game is aiming to be free to play. Now, on the top right, you can see, uh, like, a little uh, star bar. And uh, if I fill that star bar, I will get 600 gold cubits. Now, I can use those gold cubits to spend on a lot of things. Like, I can use it to buy classes. Um, I can use it to buy, like, party animals and uh, prisms and tomes and stuff like that. Um, you can also use it to buy mounts, like one of the very first things I bought was one of the cheaper mounts, so I had a mount to ride about on. But yeah, uh, at weekends that is 600 a day I believe, and then in the week weekdays I think it's 200 or 300 a day you can earn. But yeah, that basically means you can earn currency like every day, which you can then use to like unlock classes and stuff. Now I've been playing about a week now. And I can actually unlock a new class if I want to. Like, I'm up to 6,500. So, yeah, I'll be buying a new class, I think, shortly. And we'll be checking that out. But, like, to say it's free to play, I was surprised at how quickly I actually unlocked that currency to be able to do that, like, class buying and stuff. I mean, there are some stuff like the mounts and the costumes, which are, you know, you do have to pay for. But I think that's fair enough, really. Like, you've got to... It's free to play, you've got to pay for something, haven't you? So, yeah. I think that's fair enough. Like, I paid a bit so I can get this uh, uh, booster seat mount. Right, so when you're playing uh, with other people in the adventure world, what you will notice is, if you're near them, like, say this guy kills a skeleton, we'll both get the XP and the drop that that skeleton drops, which is awesome. Another thing, like, if I start mining and I mine some shapestone, if he's near enough to me, he will also get shapestone, which is pretty awesome, in my opinion. Uh, so, yeah, it basically means, like, you are much better off, you know, helping each other out and mining together and doing the dungeons together and stuff. Right, so we have a dungeon here. Uh, this is in the Arctic realm, and it's a Slave of Dracolich. So this is going to be a boss character. And uh, usually with these, they'll be right at the top. Oh, hello. Let's sort this spider out real quick, like. Oh, damn it, I'm pressing the wrong button. Mm. Alright, so normally there'll be, a, there'll be a portal to get you going. But it looks like, I don't know where this is. Ow. Right, so, we want to, ah, right, yeah. So yeah, let's just go up here, basically. Right, 
Right, so now if we go through this portal, it should take us to another section in this tower. That will be. Oh, it's actually took us right to the boss, so we are going to try and slay this guy right now. Right, so some of the skills I've got, uh, number two, my number two skill is basically like a sort of berserker mode, so I will fire faster and things like that. My number one skill is this, so I will jump up in the air and uh, do a bit of damage on the ground as I do that. Uh, yeah, that right mouse button, when my, like, as you can see, I'm shooting. When I get, like, that other circle, that means it's charged. So, yeah, you see I've got that other circle now? I can charge, and that does, like, a, a bigger amount of damage. Right, so we're completing the boss. We get a, a nice bit of XP. You can see my star bar's gone up a little. And, uh, yeah, we also get a chest. We can uh, open and see what we get inside. Now, I've got some shadow key fragments. Some warp seed and an item. I got a gun, which uh, I will probably, most likely, turn into. Uh... Oh, flux! That's what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, one of the dungeons. Now there's loads of different types, and each like biome will have a different sort of theme to their dungeon, which is pretty cool, in my opinion. Uh, let's get some of these snakes killed. We're getting their extra XP and stuff. It's quite cool when you kill them, they'll split into two. And then we'll get a little more XP from both of them. Oh, we got a little Yeti man. It is all about getting that uh, charged um, attack up on the uh, gunslinger. Very useful. There's a lot of damage. Right, so as you can see, as we've done that dungeon, we've got an X on the map now. So, yeah, I think we're going to head to another area. Try and go to a different biome. We'll take care of these chaps first. Like I say, I'm a little bit over-leveled for this, but, you know. Or to make it easy on episode 2. We'll save the failures for later on. <laughs> Right, so, I think this is the fairy sort of woody section, although we have got a very nice open mine here, oh my life, that is delicious mining. Right, this has been gla glacial shards I was talking about in the other episode. Uh, so yeah, when you break those, they'll, they'll drop like, you know, four or five glacial shards, usually. Right, so this is one way to mine, now there is another way, uh, that is to craft bombs. Right, it is quite expensive, so it, for each for each five bombs it costs uh, one primordial flame and ten shapestone. So we are going to craft some, because I do like, do like mining with bombs. So we'll craft a hundred, I think. Yeah, and this is one of the few items you can just craft on the go, like you can craft bottles and the basic crafting table, and stuff like that, which is cool. Right, we should nearly be there now. Yep. Right, so now, as you can see on my hotbar, if that thing would get out of the way. I know about Blast Jump. I told him, I told him about it. <laughs> yeah, you, you should be able to see next to... Why are you doing that? <laughs> Why are you there we are. Right, yeah, as you can see next to my Q, I've got an R, and that is now my bomb skill. So, yeah, you can just mine like this, which is... Much quicker, but uh, it is quite expensive. Like I say, it's uh, you know it's two shape stone and then like uh, one in five, a fifth of a primordial flame per bomb. Uh, we got some uh, somber souls there, which are used for some crafting uh, recipes. Boom! Yeah, this is much much more fun than uh, mining slowly. Right, we'll have a quick nosy about to see if there's any Infinium poking its head out anywhere. Uh, yes, there's some here. Lovely. Like I said in the previous episode, Infinium's probably the hardest to come by out of the free. You do need it for an awful lot of crafting recipes. But yeah, like I say, with uh, 
former site there. I've got 1100 former site now. And I'm down to 85 Infinium and 230 Shape Stone. So yeah, I don't really need to be getting any more uh, former site for a while anyway. Right, so let's head into this other realm, or biome, should I say. And uh, we'll try and get some more dungeons done. Well, I've got some walls to climb. Ah, yeah, one of the good items you can find in enchanted woods. I always find uh, enchanted uh, wood in the uh, enchanted woods. I don't think they're actually called enchanted woods, but uh, cursed forest, that's it, that's what they're called. So, yeah, they're quite handy um, for some crafting. Uh, I'm just going to pop my cornerstone down so we can fill up our flasks. And, yeah, we need to make our way up there. Oh, there's some infinium there, though, which I'm, uh, I'm going to grab. <laughs> Bombs away! Uh, I'm trying to mine here. You mind? I'll deal with you in a second. Right. Oh no. There we go. Get a bit of XP. All that. Oh, this is a massive open mine. Not much Infinium though! Which is no good. Right, let's try and scale this a bit. Right, so I think we'll head to that uh, robo area so I can show you some of that because they look really cool, those biomes. Oh yeah, I forgot they dropped them. Drop from a snake. Oh, we have got another. Is this a. Oh, it's been done. These chaps have done it. They beat me to it. I mean, it's definitely worth going round in groups or friends or, you know, even making friends. Just, you know, when you go into an adventure world, just hang with some people and, yeah. I mean, you'll get uh, a lot of work done and, like I say, you'll be sharing your mining. And stuff like that. Well, not sharing it. You'll basically be like duplicating what you get. Now these sunflowers are found in uh, peaceful realms, and uh, from them you can mine sunflower uh, bulbs. And yeah, this has been relatively uh, stripped already. Like this area in here would be, you know, full of sun um, bulbs. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll come back to that when we find one that's you know not been touched. That would be a better idea. Well, yes, the, uh, the greeny the greeny bits are sea. The tranquil seas, which don't really have anything in. Uh, but, yeah, we are at the sort of robo area. Yeah, data spires, that's what it's called. So, yeah, you'll get, obviously, in each biome, you'll get, you know, different themed mobs, which will do different attacks. And they also drop different things, like... In here, what's very useful in Data Spires is uh, that you have a, a chance to uh, enemies to drop them. Um, uh, what should we call it? Uh, robotic parts, which are used in a lot of crafting items. Right, so yeah, we've got another we've got another dungeon here, and we've got some chaps here. So I think we'll uh, give them an hand actually. If we can get up there, that would be easiest to scale. Wow. Uh, oh no. Right, these big chaps, uh, they've actually used us come out of the sky, that noisy word with like a lightning bolt. Uh, but they do have a chance to drop uh, prisms and like really rare sort of items, so they are always worth killing in my opinion. They also drop flux every time, which is also a nice little bonus. I guess. Alright, let's, let's see if we can get up here. Cause I made a bit, of a, a bit of a meal of it before. There we are. Forced my way in. What block? There's some really cool looking blocks in the, in the data spires as well. Alright, here's the portal. So I should... Oh, my life! Wow, 
literally just <laughs> just came as he finished my boss. Oh, that wasn't my boss actually. No, I've still got to find him. Uh, where is it? All ah, right, this is yeah. If it says danger awaits in this location, that will mean it will be uh, a horde. Basically, it hordes. So yeah, as soon as I unleash this, we're gonna get enemies. And yeah, you get the enemy counter, so we need to kill three enemies this wave, and then uh, we'll have a, a second wave of enemies. And that is my second wave. Boom. Yep, and then we've added to the star bar, we've also got more experience, and we've got loot. Glorious loot. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, we've got more shadow key fragments. Now, shadow keys, when you make those, you can basically craft them. And then you have to find a shadow area. And uh, you can, they have these portals which basically need keys to activate. And that's like a very, you know, sort of large scale, uh, very similar to what we've just done with the uh, waves of enemies. we will usually be like uh, five or six waves of enemies, but you will get really rare loot from it. And uh, yeah, they take quite a lot of fragments to craft keys. Like I'm up to 108. I think it's 250. I'm not 100% sure on that, if that's correct. But it's around that sort of value. You can also buy them from the store. Um, yeah, so you can buy shadow keys for 500 or a set of three for 1300 of those. Uh, now, if you do want to buy credits on this game, this is the sort of split. Then they come with. So for four pounds, you're gonna get seven hundred and fifty. For a fit like sixteen pounds, you're gonna get three thousand two hundred and fifty, and so on. Uh, now there are starter packs, uh, which are like fifteen pounds. You will get seven hundred and fifty credits. You get those two classes. So you can get the Fate Tricks there and the Neon Ninja. So you'll have four classes from the get go there, which is definitely worth it. You'll get an extra like storage uh, slot, and you'll get like loads of each primordial. Primal block, sorry, and you'll get a unique helmet. And obviously, there's different tiers of, you know, um, starter packs, which is cool. Um, but what I did, I actually just bought credits because I wanted a. I played it for quite a bit. I already had, you know, I don't, I didn't need any of the blocks, and I worked out you could uh, unlock, you know, new classes by just doing, um, by earning the cubits in game. So I didn't think I needed to unlock the classes. So I actually bought some of these, I bought um, a 3,250 and I got, you know, uh, my mount from that and a few other bits and pieces, which is cool. <coughs> right, so, let's head onward. Now in the data spires, these are just basically the plants you would find in other ones. So you're going to get bombs occasionally dropping from them, but most of the time it's going to be warp seeds. So yeah, you should see some warp seed dropping. Well, then, no, that's not what's currently happening. Yep, yeah, there we are, there's some warp seed. Oh, some primordial, we'll take that. We will take that. Right, so I think I'm going to leave that episode there, guys, and we will come back in the next episode, hit a few more dungeons and a few more of the different biomes, like we're going to have a look at the lava, biome over to the left there and we'll check out you know some of the, the fairy forest and stuff like that and also show you a bit of the uh, tranquil seas but yeah as always guys thanks for watching and uh, i'll see you later bye